This month, uh, we are not having a speaker, but we have quite a few things to share with you. Um, and as usual, this is really space for you to also ask us questions. Um, so if you have any questions, please either unmute yourself because you're muted by default, or if you feel it might be too noisy or you feel more comfortable um, just typing something into the chat, um, just feel free to do that at any point. Um, but I think we could just start with a few updates. Um, so first thing, um, we would like to introduce you to Patricia. Um, so I can't remember now whether we already mentioned to you. Oh, I can hear the record, uh, the, the echo of myself. So Sarah will be unfortunately leaving us um, and we are all very sad. Um, but some of the work um, Sarah has been doing uh, will be taken over by Patricia, um, our DCC colleague. Um, and we thought it would be nice if Patricia just introduced herself to you and tell you a little bit more about herself. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Patricia. I joined the DCC in uh, September, I think. It feels longer already. Um, and uh, uh, once Sarah is leaving, um, I'm taking over some of her tasks um, around the product management of DMP Online. Um, before I joined the DCC, I actually worked at the University of Birmingham, so I have some experience of how it is to be on the uh, on your side as a DMP Online um, subscriber. Um, so. Uh, yeah, going forward, I hope uh, I get to know most of you that I don't know yet. I know some of the UK people, but uh, uh, not many of the other customers. I'm looking forward to uh, getting to know you all and working with you on DMP Online. Okay, brilliant. Thank you, Patricia. Um, I don't know, Sarah, whether you would like to speak a little bit about our summer intern, Theo? Uh, joining us next yeah, week. Yeah, sure. Um, so, so one of the um, aspects of work we'll be focusing on at the moment, we're doing a, a Rails five upgrade. That's what the dev team's busy with. Um, but we have an intern starting next week, um, and um, he's he's kind of focused on um, the usability side of the tool. Um, he's doing some um, human computer in um, uh, the HCI course um, at mm. Edinburgh. And um, there are two aspects where we've got tickets that have been raised, things we've discussed in our user group, um, which we wanted to just flag today and to maybe have a little bit of discussion around. So the first one, thanks for making that bigger, yeah. um, the plan the plan wizard um, that we have in the tool. At the moment, um, we have three questions that you're probably aware of, just asking people um, you know, the name of their plan or the, the nature of their project. And then we have a question around which organization they're in and which um, funder they're applying to. And there's some logic built into those answers um, to de define which question set, so which template and which um, set of guidance to give them. And what we found from comments from yourselves and also from users is that they don't always know exactly what template they'll be given by the answers they give. Um, and sometimes if they're trying to get a specific template, if they know, you know, there's like a institutional template, they don't know, you know, essentially what, how to answer to get what they want. Um, so we, in the last user group, we discussed a potential reworking of this page and we gave people different options. And we wanted to flag to you the, the kind of option that came out as a preference from the user group at the time, which is what we're likely to go with. But we, we obviously need to consult with various users. Um, and the decision here was that we should still have those kind of questions as filters. So we should be asking people to choose a research funder if it's applicable and choose an institution if it's applicable. We can still default the institution based to the institution that the user's at. So that would be pre-filled already. And they can decide not to have a research funder. You know, you can tick that there isn't a funder that's applicable. And the main change from this is that what they would then be presented rather than just generating the plan for them, they'd be presented with a list of the different template options. So you can see here, Karolinska is one of the Swedish universities that subscribes to the tool. 
we've got the Karolinska standard DMP, we've got their postgraduate student DMP, we've got different um, research council ones. So the Swedish research council comes in based on the fact that SRC has been picked as the funder and you might have other templates that show up in the list as well. So like uh, the generic um, template. And what was discussed in the user group is that admins would be able to configure this list. So um, there might be a specific template that they want to prioritize and put at the top or ones that they want to show um, based on the, the options chosen. So this is something that it'd be good to get your feedback on. Does that seem a more useful layout um, that we're actually giving people the list of, of templates to pick from? Or do you think users would get confused by that? And would you like to be able to configure that list of templates so we don't just, you know, present people with everything? I don't know if people, I know it's it's sometimes mm -hmm. hard to give reflections when you've just seen something for the first time, but I don't know if you have any gut reactions to that, if anyone wants to speak out or add something to chat. Um, I, I have a comment. Um, yeah. If, if the options are going to be available, it would definitely be nice to be able to configure that just to reduce, like you mentioned, confusion where, where it's obvious that there's no funder, right? Then, you know, just to make sure that it's clear, you know, I think having a list and that being configurable would be useful. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so so at the moment, what's kind of pulling into there is everything that could be an option, um, but you might want to define subsets. So like, obviously we wouldn't, we wouldn't put all the funders in here if there's like, sweet, you know, a certain funder picked. Yeah, um, I think, was somebody else unmuted as well? I was trying to just look through the user list here. If others have thoughts. Hi, Sarah. Um, can Hi. I yeah, yeah, yeah go ahead, Chris. Thanks. Um, so I'm, I'm thinking we're, we're a very large um, research intensive institution and we could be having um, a very wide range of uh, options that people might want to go to. It might be Horizon 2020, it could be um, templates perhaps from funders in the States. Um, I suspect that probably because of the nature of our institution, we might want to have, um, let, let's suppose there's, for argument's sake, let's imagine there's a hundred templates available, um, some of which are ones that we've created. Um, we might want to choose a very high proportion of all available templates just because of the nature of, of our university. Um, I don't think that causes a problem for uh, the, the option that you're su suggesting. I'm just trying to flag that you might end up with a very large list and it might be helpful perhaps an institution could look at um, the, num the frequency with which certain templates are used. So it would be useful to be able to put some templates near the top of the list and others lower down. Yeah, yeah. So so one thing I should flag here actually, so these on the left hand side are filters. So we would never present anyone with like a list of 100 templates because it's obviously way too much. So this um, selecting the most relevant option for you will always be, I think it should be capped at something like 10 maximum. Um, it would always be like a, a shortened list based on the filters. <clears throat> so it would be limited either by the funder um, and the institution based on what they select here. Um, and our thinking, so what would come out of the Dutch user group is that um, people would want to configure that list. So rather than just always having like the funder template at the top, which is what we do at the moment. If somebody is responding to a funder, we give them the funder template automatically, um, even if their institution has a template. Um, what they wanted to be able to do is that the admins can define different logic effectively. So um, for some Dutch universities, their templates are approved by the funder. So it might be that the only option that they would list if you know their, their template's been approved is just the institutional one. So I think this list would always be quite short, the, the template okay. list. 
but it gives you the ability to kind of preference certain things over over another. Uh, all right. That, I, I I think apologies. I, I might have got a little bit confused. I wasn't sure. Uh, I think what my understanding is that depending on the option that the user selects on the left hand side of the screen, that will generate quite a small subset of options on the right yeah. hand side of the screen. Yeah. Grand. I, yeah. I, I I just thought Swedish Research Council. I wasn't sure whether they had a defined template or not. <laughs> Yeah, no, no, they do. And and what you can see in the list here, there's also like a customization from Karolinska. So, you know, people can then choose, you know, which version they want, the one with the Karolinska stuff in. And it might be that the institution could say we only want to give them that option because we want to make sure our questions are always asked as well. Yeah, that's lovely. Thanks. Thanks for clearing that up. Yeah. Um, OK, so that I see Bev's also said it isn't too much of an issue you've seen you haven't really had people getting confused about that page so you wouldn't want to add too much confusion for the sake of it yeah I think it's a page that we've tried reworking a few times in the past um, institutions have found it hard to point people towards their own templates um, because of the way that the logic preferences funded templates um, so this was a way to try and just make it simpler but again it's something that we'd want to do a lot of testing on to make sure it works um, for different organizations because it's a change to one of the main aspects of the tool. Yeah, it looks quite neat. Yeah, out of the various options we provided, just having filters seemed to be the most straightforward for people. Um, and the request from admins was just that they could configure the list so that you're able to essentially, for the different use cases that apply in your own institution, you can give a much narrower list of options for um, different users. Yeah, okay. can, I, can I add something? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, uh, I'm Irina, so I would like to add something from the Dutch perspective. Uh, I'm, yeah. I'm very happy to see this list. Uh, I'm wondering if it would also be possible to show, uh, so, so you already described our situation, like our institution templates are approved, even if they select the funder, we still want them uh, to use our template. Yeah. Would it be possible to also show the funder's template, but if they, when they select it, there's like a warning or a message saying like, just so you know, uh, your, your institution asks you to select the uh, institution template unless you have like a very good reason not to do so. Yeah, yeah, no, exactly. This is um, part of what we tried to map out in the user group, exactly um, what the functionality should be. So um, my understanding of it so far is that you should have control over this list that displays. Um, but then also if, so the question I guess I would have is whether we just shouldn't, you should have the ability to say, don't show the funder template at all because we want people to use the institutional one um, or whether you show it and then you get this option to put a warning in saying, you know, this is not what we would advise you to use. So I guess these are the, the kind of features we need to spec out and build out. Yeah, yeah, okay. So that is undecided. Yeah, yeah. I think um, maybe just allow, allowing you to control that list is sufficient and then you shouldn't need the warnings. Um, but it's whether your users would get confused if they're applying to a funder and all they see is, you know, the institutional template. Yeah, yeah. OK, thank you. Yeah. Any other comments on on this one? No. So the other aspect that came out of that user group, which again is something we want to, to build out over the, the coming months, um, is around plan review. Um, so I know a number of you are using the, the plan kind of feedback option in the tool. You have that configured on. And at the moment, it's very simple. Um, it just alerts your admin team as a whole um, that there's a plan to review and you just have one button to complete the plan review. Um, and there was some discussion in the last user group, which you can see in this ticket 2365, around essentially making that a more managed process. So you get the details about the plan as you have already. Ideally, if you're using schools and departments, it pulls in that data so that you can then try and assign the plan reviews across the team. Um, and the questions we have here are really around 
how that process should work. So would you want um, an ability like a field like assigned where you have a drop down list of all of your um, admins who do plan reviews and then you could assign to people and it alerts them or would people self assign from the list they'd, they'd see ones that are relevant to them um, and then what kind of fields or columns would you need to kind of check the progress and the, the different actions so under the progress, I'm guessing you might want to note that something's been assigned or been accepted by somebody if it's not self-assigning um, or that it's in progress. I don't know if these are just like drop downs that you'd have and people can just update the status so you know where things are at. Um, and then at the moment, the only action we have is completing. But if, if you're assigning the DMP reviews across a bigger team, maybe you need some, you know, reassign actions to send it to somebody else so those are some of the ideas that we've had so far but again this this needs to be specced out how you want this to work um, so we could have a bit of discussion on that now or this is something you can also add comments into the ticket if you've got strong thoughts um, so Irina I don't know if you want to reflect on this because I think it's it's mostly in the Netherlands that there's a a team of people doing the plan reviews but other unis might also have thoughts yeah, yeah, that's indeed the case for our uh, institution. We have several different departments, and the different departments uh, each uh, check the, the the DMPs from only their apartment. So at the moment, we don't use the plan review button for that reason. Um, okay. So it it would be great for us if there could be a, a drop down list. I think it would be best if the uh, writer of the DMP uh, assigns uh, the DMP to his or her data manager. That's also how they knew it now by uh, making someone a co-author. Uh, so that's basically what they do now. Uh, okay, so at the moment within your organization, you're assigning it like the users, the actual researchers, the one doing that because they they know who the data manager is in their department. Yes, yes. So we have specified a list somewhere else and in our instructions it says that the uh, user should share their DMP. Uh, with their data manager instead of using the feedback option. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. So I think if this would be in integrated, that would give us a chance to use the feedback option instead of this uh, workaround. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. So, um, so there essentially you already know who's relevant for each school or department. So we could automatically assign based, you know, you just need to be able to note the person who had admin rights, which department they are related to yes yes yeah and then we could also use like a general department uh, email address instead of someone's name for example yeah yeah mm -hmm. okay and in terms of like um, monitoring progress is that something that's kind of needed or is it's just really the assigning that's important uh, no both I would say yeah, our data managers find it difficult that they don't see which plans they've already uh, reviewed and if they, uh, yeah, basically that, if they have already reviewed it and, and when. Uh, so they would yeah. really like to see an option where they see if they uh, provided feedback in the past and uh, maybe also how long there was between that feedback and uh, the current date. Mm -hmm. Okay, so more of like the historical stuff as well, because things go out of the table once um, once you've hit complete um, and I noticed in, in chat I think is it Bev who said yeah you'd like a confirmation step on the complete because it's very easy to do by accident yeah mm -hmm. at the moment it's a link and I think we're always drawn to just click links so it is definitely an easy one to just click mm -hmm. okay we'll make a note of these so mm -hmm. see Magdalena's noting so we can add these aspects to the ticket yeah any other thoughts on that, like how you're doing plan review? I know for a, for a number of institutions, you know, it's um, it's a small team. So at the moment, the way that we have it, just email your main help desk and assigning it there is is probably sufficient. So it's really only, I guess, if you're using the schools and departments and have multiple plan reviewers um, that this assigned step comes in. But the progress is that and the kind of tracking of what's already been reviewed and being able to get data on that, is that useful too? Uh, 
Uh, may I ask? Yeah. Uh, um, in terms of the users where these uh, services provided, the review service, um, sorry for the question because I have just recently started to use the DMP online. Uh, so I'm uh, looking about the various features uh, in terms of the review of the plans. So uh, in respect of the users, do you have any feature that we can uh, distinct in which users we can offer the review service? Is there any um, feature that allow us to review just uh, uh, in, uh, to review the plan from a specific uh, user's categories. For example, if it's a principal investigator, the researcher, or if it's um, he or she is a PhD student or stuff like that. Uh, do you have any distinction? I, I'm, I'm after, you know, to, the, to try to find out the audience that we we have to provide yeah. uh, the service. So, you know what I mean? Yeah, just to filter the audience in a way, just to control the amount of work um, that we have to do. Because uh, uh, the universities, uh, sometimes they have great audiences, research audiences. So, yeah, uh, it's yeah. not easy no, always no. to offer. Yeah, thank you. So at the moment, it's it's like a blanket on or off. So an admin can configure it on for the institution. And that then allows anyone who's in your affiliated with your institution. So um, researchers of all categories, PhD students or PIs um, will get. Um, it's not filtered by the type of user. That's not something we capture. We don't um, record that somebody's a PhD student as opposed to PI. Um, potentially, I don't know, there could maybe be an option to offer it on certain templates because I know um, some unis have different templates for PhD students. So it might be that you offer review plan reviews on a certain template and that's something we could maybe build in um, the logic around. But at the moment, it's just a blanket on and off for the institution. Mm -hmm. mm, OK, thank you. Yeah. I don't know if anyone has reflections on the number of things that come in for review. Um, I know, so I know Manchester, for example, you know, proactively reviews any um, completion of their own template. Um, but I don't think the traffic is too high from other institutions. I don't know. You might have reflections on that. Oh yeah, something you can trial at Birmingham and see. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, so those those are two kind of areas where we want to enhance the usability. So that's things that we'll we'll do more consultation on. If you have reflections, by all means, add them to the ticket or email us, and we can um, add those kind of requests in. Um, yeah. And then the next aspects you had on the list, um, I'll just mention there's a hackathon going mm -hmm. on over the next couple of days um, through RDA. The RDA Europe node in Austria is running one around machine actionable DMPs. So looking at use cases of the common standard, um, we're doing some work. We've been extending our API to conform with that standard so that we can export like a standard JSON representation of the DMP that could be imported into other systems. Um, so Sam um, has been working with the team in the US and with the, the French and um, uh, Tom, who is from Haplo. Um, they've been doing some work in this area as well. I don't know if there's anything you want to say on that, Sam. I think he was on the call. Uh, yeah, no, just that uh, it's a great opportunity for us to kind of test that uh, machine actual DMP uh, workflow that we're we're building out um, with the the other tools being able to potentially provide um, you know somewhat more complete machine actual DMPs. It's going to be a lot better of a test of uh, the ingest workflow because uh, we were basically the the way it's being set up now. Um, an institution pushes a machine actionable DMP at us to as a way basically to create a plan for one of their researchers. So 
so that runs on for the next um, few days on Friday there'll be like a a demo of what's been completed. There's there's various different groups um, working on this. There's one around tagging existing funder templates um, with the common standard as well. Um, so that's one that I've just been on a call about um, and we'll do some progress on. So we'll report on that in future drop-ins and newsletters. Yeah, um, great, thank you. And we just have a few more items to go through and they won't take too much time, uh, but I wanna make sure if anyone is having any questions, I'm not having the chat open here because I'm sharing my screen, but um, if Sarah, Patricia or Sam just see someone asking anything, uh, feel free to either unmute yourself or just uh, chat in the, in the chat. Um, I wanted to flag that Again, I can't remember whether we already spoke about it in our last drop-in session last month, but uh, the conditional questions are now live and we have a guide on GitHub. And also we put together a video uh, which you can watch on YouTube and a short blog post for those um, who are not familiar with this feature. Um, but just to explain you very quickly, um, this has been requested, I think it was last year around March and we are very happy this is now a live and how this really works is that um, you would need to start with your template and on um, a few type of questions is the radio buttons and two more uh, with the controlled values. You can set um, the conditions which can remove certain questions um, from your template. So for example, um, if there is a question around, I don't know, human subjects and your researcher tells you um, there won't be uh, human participants involved, um, he or she will be able to just skip set of questions, for example, around ethics. Um, and another great functionality of the conditional questions is that it also triggers emails. So, for example, you can set up email on certain answers, um, such as if the user selects, I don't know, a different repository rather than your uh, university one or tells you, I don't know, I'm going to gather a crazy amount of data that your institution will not be able to hold, it's going to trigger an email for you straight away um, and you can get in touch with the user um, around the different repository or um, around the data volume they are planning to create. But uh, we have a short blog post as well, um, which I recommend for you to have a look at. And just very few items to go through. Um, for those that are not uh, being subscribed to our newsletter, our April uh, newsletter is out. And um, I'm not going to run through all of the items in the newsletter now, but you can see a link and maybe Sarah or Patricia can just copy these links into the chat for you. And it's quite a good way for you to stay up to date with our most recent work and see what we are working on at DMP Online. Um, we are always advertising our following and drop-in sessions or user groups or trainings in the newsletter as well. So it's a quite nice way to stay um, up to date with our work. Um, also, our last month recording is now live on YouTube. And so as I mentioned at the beginning of the session, we are always um, trying to make these recordings available for those who could not join us this morning. And um, last month we were joined by Jacques Flores from Utrecht University. So if you're interested to uh, listen to how they are going about using DMP online and research data management at Utrecht, I would definitely recommend you to listen to our uh, YouTube recording. And we actually do have a whole playlist of these recordings um, and at some point, I'll try to write um, a blog post about these as well, just so it's easier for you to navigate and see um, at least the guest speakers and the institutions from the, which they come from and some key points they spoke about. And um, so um, if, if, you, if there is something more specific you want to listen to, you will be able to do so. Currently, it's just a list with months and dates, just telling you uh, we had a recording, but I think it can be quite nice actually to go back and know um, who was speaking from which university and maybe just a few key points. Um, and now um, I have been very active recently um, chasing some guest speakers. And thank you very much for those uh, who have participated. We have now guest speakers confirmed till November, um, which is great. And I'll be getting in touch next month and further on just to start planning the guest speakers for the months to come. But many thanks for those who have volunteered 
Um, we always like to give you more space to ask us questions, but we did have quite a few comments as Sarah was going through a few things, but um, I'll stop speaking and um, just give you some time to think if there is something you would like to ask us. Yeah, sure. There, there had been a couple more things in chat. So Maria mm -hmm. Lisa had mentioned that they need two or more rounds of review before the plan's ready. So can we build this into the workflow? So I think in terms of like the progress status, that's maybe something we can do, whether it's like an initial review or, um, and also if we're flagging the history of the plan reviews. So you can see this has already been submitted and when it was submitted um, and when it was reviewed, so that can help you with the tracking. Um, so that's really useful to know. Um, and Irina has also mentioned about um, DMP online training. Um, we wanted to do one focused on APIs, that's right. We had hoped to do that this month, but we've just been incredibly busy on help desk and with various different things. Um, but that is still in our plans. We'd like to get an API training for ourselves as well. I know I, I'm a novice on the API, so it'd be really good to get a proper like tutorial walking through with, with Sam and seeing, you know, play along at the same time. Um, so we'll try and get that scheduled for some time in June and, uh, and alert you all to that. Um, and that then can let you test some of those new features like the departmental stuff. So yeah, we'll we'll <laughs> and try and get something out. Google contributing to the end, no worries. <laughs> Sorry about this, <laughs> trying to mute myself here, but. <laughs> um, anything else anyone wants to raise before we close? Any other comments? I don't see anything in chat. No? Well, thank you all for, for joining in. It's really, it's really good to be able to just keep you up to date on what's been happening in the team and what work's coming. Um, other things you want to say, Magdalena? This conference will now be recorded. Sorry, wrong. I was going to unmute myself and press the wrong button. Um, yes, just very few last um, admin things towards the end. Um, so I was mentioning the newsletter to you, but for those um, who are on Twitter, uh, do follow us on Twitter and Facebook and LinkedIn and do subscribe to our monthly newsletter. Um, maybe if I could ask either Sarah or Patricia just to copy all of these links to the chat for you. Um, Patricia's um, on it. She's done it already. <laughs> Brilliant. Thank you so much for doing that. And um, just sorry for the sound. Um, we are having our next drop in meeting on the 23rd of June at half past 10. And our guest speaker will be Christopher Tips from University of Exeter. Um, and you're more than joined to welcome us uh, to join us if you if you can on the day. And thank you all for joining us. It was great having you. Um, I'll try to add the things I was highlighting into the newsletter as well, and possibly try to email these as well in a case you have some further feedback for us, um, because sometimes it might be difficult just to think on the on the spot during 30 minutes. But um, thank you for, for the feedback you were able to give us during the session as well. Great. Brilliant. Thanks, everybody. Have a nice day. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Okay. Have a great day. Bye. Bye, thank you.